Testing, hallelujah. Oh, you can hear me. Beloved, are you in love with God? Yes. You know, that's really at the core of what it means to be Catholic, is to be in love with God. Amen? Amen. In fact, the word Catholic, Catholicos, what does it mean? Universal. So really what it means is that God gave us everything when he gave us Jesus. And so we give him back all of our love. We give him everything. Amen? Amen. So the best thing in the world is to be Roman Catholic. Amen? Amen? And so you want to thank God every day. It's the greatest thing in the world. And right now we're going through a trial. You know that. We know that. A trial with this, the man-made COVID-19. We're going through quite a battle right now, the whole world. But God is allowing the church and the world to be cleansed. And now, like never before, we had to hold on to our rosary beads, hold on to Jesus in the Eucharist, because when we come out on the other side of this, the prophets have all said, the entire world will become baptized Catholic. Amen? Amen? Yes. The every Buddhist, every Hindu, every Muslim, every atheist, and everyone who works for MSNBC will be converted. Everyone will receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen? He's going to prove himself to the world and to the teenagers and even to California. <laughs> he's going to prove that he's God. Amen? Amen? In fact, my good friend Christine has written a beautiful book called The Warning. Have you read it yet? Yes. It's a wonderful book. If you haven't read it, you've got to get it. It's in English and in Spanish. But Christine is describing this amazing event that's been prophesied even by saints, including a young priest named St. Edmund Campion, who was a British martyr. And he also saw this. He said, I see a day, the day of change that is coming. And he said this right before he died. He was actually in captivity. So, you know, the day before you die, you don't say foolish words. The day before you die, and you know you're dying, you only say what God inspires you with. Amen? Amen? He said, I see a great day of change coming when every man and woman and child of every religion and every culture and every nation will have revealed to them by a great light the one true God. Amen? Amen. Today, beloved, is the feast day of Corpus Christi when that day comes, we may live to see it, by the way, the great warning. When that day comes, everyone will acknowledge Jesus in the Eucharist. We'll have to make this church maybe five times bigger. Every church will have to be expanded because everyone will be here to worship their God present in that little piece of bread called the Eucharist. Amen? Amen. So this great gift... We want to begin understanding it and loving it in advance. And I wanted to tell you what happened to me at one Mass in Texas some years ago when I was asked to go preach at this parish where there was like a dispute between two sides of the parish. It was a big parish near, near Laredo. And they were having all kinds of problems. And my boss asked me if I would go there and take all the masses one weekend and to preach to the people. And it just so happens, the Sunday that I went there, the gospel was from John chapter 6. And which gospel is that? John chapter 6. What does that say? Anybody remember? Yes, I am the bread of life. The man who eats my body and drinks my blood will live forever, he said. And so the Lord had a plan to give to all mankind, in, including Filipinos and Chinese and Russians and Vladimir Putin, everyone, his own flesh to eat, to transform them to be God-men, to be like God. Amen? Right now, we're too much like Satan. but We need to become more like God. Amen? And so the Lord said the best way to make them like God is to give them God to eat. And so we actually consume the flesh of the God-man at every Mass because you become what you eat. Amen? Amen? So when I went to preach in Laredo in the parish that was divided in two, it just so happens the Gospel was John chapter 6. 
So I had to preach about how this is his body and his blood. And I remember at the last Mass on Sunday evening at this parish, it was a totally Spanish Mass, that one, and it was like overflowing with people. And I, I preached about the real presence of the Lord from my heart, because I know that he's there, and I've seen so many miracles. One, even when I was a teenager, I saw a Eucharistic miracle. As a teenager, I was a monk, and I saw a teenager, a teenage miracle happen. So now it's happening to me again as a priest in Laredo. So as I'm preaching, there's like, oh my gosh, it was like the Holy Spirit was in the church. And I don't know how many were there. The church was like overflowing with people. But here's the thing. When I went back to the altar after the homily to consecrate the bread and wine, as Father T and I will do shortly, but when I consecrated the large host, you know, and lifted it up, when I went to put the host down on the little plate called the patent, where all the small hosts were, the top small host was bleeding. And I put the host down and went, whoa! Because I've said a lot of mass, but I don't always see the host bleeding. And so at the sign of peace, when I went to shake the hand of Mrs. Guadalupe, she was the sacristan for that church, she had set up every Mass in that church every day without missing one day in 30 years. That's, that's a famous story in Texas. In 30 years, she never missed one Mass in 30 years. She sets up every Mass. So, of course, I asked her, because she set up that Mass, which means she put the host there. You see what I mean? I said, Lupe, did you set up for Mass? I knew she had. She did every one for 30 years. Lupe, did you set up for Mass? Yes, Father. Lupe, did you put the host on the patent? Yes, Father. Lupe, do you see what I see? Yes, Father. Lupe, was that there before the Mass? No, Father. But Father, when you were preaching to us about the Gospel of John, all of us back here, there were like eight different ministers in the back. Father, we were burning up with fire. We were burning with fire, all of us. Although the air conditioning was on, we were burning with fire. I said, thank you, Lupe. And I continued the Mass. And it came time for Holy Communion. And I want you to distribute the body and blood of Christ to everyone there. I, I, I'm going to guess and say 800 people. I had a helper, thank God. And went to distribute Holy Communion. And I, I couldn't give out that host. It's sitting there, sh bright, shiny red blood on top. I couldn't give that one out for some reason. I just, it was like anointing me, anointing me, anointing me. And so I gave everyone else, I didn't know what to do at that moment. I wanted to talk to the bishop, you see. So when I got down to the end, there were three more people to come. I thought, oh, I better get public witnesses. So I thought, I better get three witnesses. And so I asked the last three people, do you see that? Yes, Father. But I didn't give it, I gave her the other one. The next one came, I said, do you see this, Mama? Yes, Father. Crying. I gave her the next one. The last one was like an NFL football linebacker. He was like six foot eight and 300 pounds. I said, oh, that's a good witness right there. I said, hey, buddy, do you see that? He said, yes, Father. But I didn't give it to him. I gave him another one. I just wanted three witnesses, amen? The Bible says that prove everything by two or three witnesses, you see? And I went back up, and I said, Lupe, do you have a special container? Yes, Father. And I put that hose with a shiny red blood in a special container called a pix. And I put that in the tabernacle, and I finish Mass. I'm ready to, to say goodbye. I do the final blessing, and no one goes home. I've never seen that in a Catholic church. <laughs> Nobody would go. They just stayed. And then the, a man got up and went to the confessional box, and 100 people lined up behind him to go to confession. But this is Sunday night. It's already 8.30, and there's no confession schedule. And I'm not getting paid overtime. <laughs> Actually, I don't get paid at all. I have a vow of poverty. So I thought, oh, my gosh, they want to go to confession. 
and I knew that Jesus was in that host. He was moving and working in the hearts. Even from that little box, he was touching everyone. Big, fat sinners and little skinny ones too. <laughs> Amen? It was incredible. So I went to the confessional to hear their confessions. What would you do? So I went and heard, their, I heard 100 confessions. I got done at midnight, literally after, after midnight. I got the last one done, and I'm walking for the confessional back, and I could barely move. I was so tired. You try hearing 100 people's sins. It wears you down, you know what I mean? So I walked back, I could barely move, and I was stunned when I got up here to the sanctuary. There was my team. They all had been kneeling the whole time, praying for me and the people. I mean, I didn't ask them. See, to me, that's a Catholic. That's a real Catholic. They see the need. They don't wait to be asked. They just do it. Amen? Amen. I couldn't believe it. Like, they've been, like, praying there for more than four hours. Five of my team were just kneeling there. They were so beautiful. It was really beautiful. Some were gringos, some were Mexican, but they were together. <laughs> see how the Eucharist unites us? They were together. And I said, thank you so much. It's because of you I had the strength late. I want to reward you. So I went to, they didn't know about the miracle, although you could feel it in the church. I went back to the tabernacle, and I opened it and took the Lord out. I wanted to show them, like I wanted to thank them for, for what they did. I said, look, I want to show you something. Do you see what Jesus did today? Look at this. I opened the pics and showed Juan, the first one. Juan was a big, giant man. He was my driver. And Juan is kneeling there, and he's looking at the host as I'm holding it. And I've never seen this before. Juan began to shake like a fish on the dock. <laughs> shake, 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 shake. Stronger and stronger, till boom, he fell down unconscious backwards. Boom. He was knocked out. TKO. Amen? Amen. So I showed the second one, a lady. Mama, look at this. She began to shake. She fell forward. Boom, unconscious. I thought they might call the police on me. I'm knocking all of them out. By the Lord, by the Lord, by the Lord. Amen? Amen. You say it now. Say this. Say, by the Lord. By the Lord. By the Lord. All things are done. Our God is real. He's real. He's real. He's in the Eucharist. You'll receive him today. I'm telling you, it's God and he's real. Amen? Amen. And he can do all things. I've seen things you wouldn't believe. One of my nuns called me last year from Central America, where I used to be a pastor. She said, Father Jim, yes, sister, why didn't you tell us that you were here? Well, sister, I'm not. I'm in Georgia. No, Father, you were here last night. What do you mean, sister? Do you remember little Jose? Yes. He was dying. And you came into the room, and you put your hand on his head, and you touched him with your cross, and he swore to it, he said, no, Father Jim was here. Father, he got out of bed. He's completely healed and he went home. He's supposed to die last night. You came in with the cross. I asked the doctor. The doctor said, no, we saw Father Jim too. I said, that's great, sister. I don't know how I did it, though. <laughs> it happened to me again two weeks ago. Someone else called me and said, Father, you came into my room and you healed me yesterday. So I said, Lord, what's going on? And the Lord said, it's your guardian angel. He looks just like you. I said, really, he's that good looking? <laughs> he said, yes, your guardian angel looks like you. So you better lose some weight right now. <laughs> Amen? What God can do, beloved, you won't believe what he can do. One time when I was a teenager and I was saying at, at the monastery, I was a Benedictine monk, I was 19, and we had enough hosts for like 25 people. That was it. Last story, because I got to go. I'm not going to get in trouble with Father, you know what I mean? Last story. 20, only like 25 people for Sunday Mass in the middle of nowhere. Mass got ready to start in our monastery, and suddenly... 650 teenage boys walked into the church. 
We were a monastery called St. Leo's Monastery in the middle of nowhere in Florida. Suddenly we got mass started and 650 boys came marching in. There's no schools anywhere. It turns out there was a Catholic football camp down the street that weekend. They forgot to tell us they were coming. Mass was started. Old, the priest, the real old priest, went down. He, he was so blind he couldn't see them. He went up to say Mass, and we always have on the patent 35 hosts. That's all we need. Father consecrated the main host and the 35 that were there, and I looked at it and said, oh my gosh, there's 650 teenage boys here. There's only enough hosts for us. And I felt really bad. So I began to pray. I was only 19. I was a teenage monk. And so I said, Lord, these boys, they need you too. You have to do something. I could see the plate, 35 hosts. I said, Lord, they need your body and blood. Please do something so they can receive you too. These boys need you more than we need you, and we all need you. Amen? Amen. And so Father got time for Holy Communion, and he gave the plate to Father Tom, a younger priest, because he was too old to do that. And Father Tom came down with the plate, and I'm watching him, and he gave out Holy Communion to all the boys. 100 boys, 200 boys, 300 boys, 400 boys, 500, 600, 650, and there were some left over. And Father Tom said to me after the Mass, I don't know why he came up to me, I'm the youngest, the youngest monk. He said, Brother Jim, I said, yes, Father, I got to talk to you. God said to talk to you. I said, really? Yes. He said, ask you. Yes, Father. Father Jim, Brother Jim, there are only 35 hosts. And I gave communion to all the monks and then 650 boys. That's impossible. I said, no, it's not. I said, I ask God to bless my brothers. Amen? Amen. Alleluia. Our God is a great God. He's a wondrous God. He's the only God. He's absolutely real. He's in the host. And today, when you receive God, ask him what you need the most. If you're depressed, ask him for joy. If you're anxious, ask him for peace. If you're lonely, ask him for love for a good friend. Amen? Amen? And if you have cancer, I've seen cancer heal about 500 times. If you have cancer, ask him to heal your cancer. Amen? Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. I could talk all night. <laughs>